I honestly did not expect to see two Balenciaga bags here. <laughs> I've seen this on Instagram, but it feels really, really strange to see it in real life and see my name on the back of it. I honestly, seeing my name on a Balenciaga show invite is honestly crazy. Oh my gosh. It's a jacket. That's so nice of them. Oh. What do I wear tomorrow now? <laughs> this is so cool. This is the jacket they gifted me. I honestly cannot believe it. It's so nice. So I brought that tripod with the light in it with me, just because I thought it'd be useful for like filming in the hotel room, because hotels notoriously don't have a lot of natural light. However, this one does have two windows. It's just that the sun's not out yet because it's so early on a Sunday. Not that it being a Sunday would matter. Um, so I just had a bath. Uh, I'm staying at a hotel called Le Pigal. Um, Le Pigal. I've actually stayed here once before when I went to the Dior show a few years ago, like pre-pandemic. Uh, uh, but I stayed here for one night and I stayed... Um, I stayed in a single room, like a with one bed and it's on a bunk bed. And I was like a bit taken back because I've not stayed on a bunk bed since I was like tiny so I was like um I really like the hotel but I just wanted to stay in like a bigger bed so I booked the double room this time um and this room has a bathtub which is amazing which I'm very very happy about so maybe today when I come back this evening I can treat myself to a relaxing bath that was more of a, like a quick body wash uh, not like a relaxing bath experience. Uh, I want to get ready with you guys ahead of today's show because I'm obviously very excited. If you've watched my channel for a long time, you'll know that I... Um, my obsession for Balenciaga has kind of like grown over the years and now it's like... Uh, like I said in the last video, it's basically a stan account at this moment in time. Uh, well, actually, that was the Defender video, but then the next video after that is the uh, new wardrobe tour and why project denim, uh, like the cowboy denim video. So if you haven't seen that, go and check it out. Um, yeah, I feel so lucky to be invited to this. Um, a proper like pinch me moment like I never thought that I'd get to go like I feel like Balenciaga is one of those like you know the, the the like huge brands in the world like Balenciaga is one of them so it's just like so it's just really surreal to think that they uh, have a seat for little old me at their show. I'm a fashion blogger boy from Manchester, moved to London, and now gets to go to these fashion shows. It's crazy. Um, but I'm very, very thankful. And of course, it would not be possible without all of you guys watching at home. So thank you. Honestly, I cannot thank you enough. Um, Here's me saying all this and I'm gonna like get the wrong train or like my Uber's gonna go the wrong way, however I get there. 
I don't know how I'm gonna get there yet. It's kind of like half an hour away from um, where I'm staying. I also fake tanned last night. Um, I kind of did my hands today. I don't often do my hands. Like if you go back through my Instagram and look at my hands compared to my arms, I do not often tan my hands, um, which is very funny. So, but sometimes I'll just colour them in with like Facetune or something because sometimes it's so bad. Like I'm a very pale person. Like if I don't fake, when I'm fake tanned, people don't know I have fake tan on because I still look pale. That's how, that's how pale I am. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I don't know if I should tell you. I was using LMS Superfood and now I'm using Lab Series BB Cream. It's like SPF, but tinted moisturiser. I use this every day. Um, probably gonna take, have to take the hairband off. And now I'm using NARS uh, Creamy Concealer, just under my eyes and over any like uh, blemishes. So I, get, I had a spot here, I had a spot here, out of, I have a scar there. Yeah. I'm very fortunate in that um, I don't get too many spots. Um, but when I do, they're huge. Like, I won't get one for like two months and then I'll get like a massive one. And it's everything you can see when you look at my face because I'm so pale, it just like attracts the eye. So one good thing about getting my eyebrows laminated, they shape them and tint them as well. So they're obviously tinted a lot darker at the moment. Um, but it means I don't really have to use any uh, other product. I just have to use the glue to kind of set them in place, which is good. Cool. I'm just looking at the invite again in the daylight and it's so cool. It's just an engraved old cracked iPhone. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to Google the address again because I think I know where it is. Yeah, I feel like I'm like 90% ready. I've just sorted out what outfit I'm gonna wear. It's all black, obviously. Um, but I'm gonna go down for some breakfast now uh, and just kind of like chill, have a coffee and then get ready to go. I don't know why I'm acting like it's a, a, a huge, well it is a huge deal, it's a huge deal to me. That concealer's really strong under my eyes, isn't it? Um, it's a huge deal to me, and I think that's why, because it's just so personal. Like, some random person on the street might not even care about uh, fashion itself, or like clothing or personal style, whereas I, um, it's so like intertwined within my life, my job. <laughs> And then out of all of that, like Balenciaga is my absolute favorite. So this is just like hard for me to process. So hey guys, I'm in my look and I am ready. A uh, little bit nervous because I don't really know anyone. I actually um, put it on my Instagram story last night and the response from you guys and everyone has been so so lovely like so many people are like oh my god like i'm so happy for you um which is really touching um and i know a couple of people that are going now as well so that's cool um but i'm still a bit nervous so we shall see So here is the hall where it is. It's exciting. There's loads of people here waiting for obvious like celebs, which is so funny. Okay. Hey guys, I'm in the space. I don't know what it is, it's like a giant circle. It's really confusing. Um, there's a giant circle of seats everywhere, and every seat has a Ukrainian flag t-shirt on it as well. So, 
I'm really intrigued as to what this thought to unfold. <laughs> Okay guys, I'm back. Um, I just kind of like had to take a minute to kind of take everything in, called Scott, spoke to a couple of my friends and stuff, just tried to like enjoy, fully take that, what just happened in. Um, it was beautiful, it was stunning, it was, uh, let me break it down. I wanna say, uh, so I'll walk you through what happened. So I got there and it was in a huge kind of like industrial, it was an, it was like, I guess in London what we have is like the XL Centre, where they have like big exhibitions and stuff. So it felt like one of those and it was huge, right? So um, my entrance was like round the other side. Uh, everyone was really friendly, everyone was lovely. Everyone that I've ever spoken to from Balenciaga um, said hello to me, which was really, really nice. I feel like at s fashion shows, there's like, um, there's like a stigma of the, the <laughs> there's a stigma of like the people and like the people that work there being kind of elitist. And I really didn't get that at Balenciaga like at all. I've been to a lot of fashion shows over the years and um, I have felt that at other ones, but I didn't feel that today. Even though when you have people like Kim Kardashian sat like on the other side and then like all these different kind of like pop stars, big fashion bloggers and stuff like that. Um, I'm not, I don't count myself as one of those, by the way. I'm talking about like those Tiara Ferrangi. I think that's how you say her name. Um, and other people and I'm just like, oh my God. Uh, I don't tend to get starstruck, like, okay, Kim Kardashian and Anna Winter. I've seen Anna Winter at other shows before, but Kim Kardashian, that's, like, kind of major. She, like, walked straight past me as she was leaving, and I could hear her talking to her friend, being like, that, that was amazing. And she was in one of the looks from the show, which was, like, the caution tape um, for skin tight moment, which was crazy. Um, anyway, so yeah, I got in, um, spoke to the people that I knew from the brand, uh, sat down in my seat. Um, obviously at the moment there is, uh, the war in Ukraine, um, with Russia invading. Um, obviously at the moment, uh, it's a really difficult time for a lot of people because, uh, Russia are invading Ukraine um, and it's all very tense like politically because um, 
basically if the Russia has said if the rest of the world like step in and help Ukraine then Russia I don't know what they'll do um I try not to talk about too many things uh that are going on like in the world in my videos because it is more of an escape for people and it's like I'm not a news outlet uh, I'm not a trained journalist I'm not someone who reports on you know war and uh health and stuff like this so um but it does affect all of us and it affects us in our daily lives and it's affecting you know a lot of people in Ukraine right now in a really bad way um so Denver wrote a piece uh, that he put on every seat. I'm going to read it out now as well. It says, The war in Ukraine has triggered the pain of a past trauma I carried with me since 1993, when the same thing happened in my home country and I became a forever refugee. Forever, because that's something that stays in you. The fear, the desperation, the realisation that no one wants you. But I also realise what really matters in life, the most important things, like life itself, human love and compassion. This is why working on this show this week was so incredibly hard for me, because in a time like this, fashion loses its relevance and its actual right to exist. Fashion week feels like some kind of absurdity. I thought for a moment. Fashion week feels like some kind of absurdity. I thought for a moment about cancelling the show that I and my team have worked on and we're all looking forward to, but then I realised that cancelling the show would mean giving in, surrendering to the evil that has already hurt me so much for almost 30 years. I decided that I can no longer sacrifice parts of me to that scentless, heartless war of ego. This show needs no explanation. It is a dedication to fearlessness, resistance, and to the victory of love and peace. Demna. And then on every seat was a t-shirt, which is the flag of Ukraine. And even the show itself, like, it felt like I was watching a post-apocalyptic moment because... It was a 360, the show was called the 360 degree show, right? So it was like a massive circle and behind this like perspex screen was a mound of snow. And then the lights came on, the wind machine started and then snow, fake snow started falling as well. And the models started coming out. Um, the models were carrying what looked like bin bags, refuse sacks, trash bags, whatever you want to call them, garbage bags. Um, and they were literally fighting. It felt. It also felt like an American next, America's Next Top Model like runway challenge where they have to like walk through, you know, turbulent winds with stuff being thrown at them. So in that sense, like, it felt like you were watching a struggle, and and I think that was really really important because the whole world is watching a struggle at the moment, and that is like the war that's happening. And it was interesting because I posted a picture of like half of the the perspex with the snow and like everything going on and then half of the crowd or like with their phones up and stuff. And someone reshared it on Instagram and said this picture is like very relevant right now of what's happening in the world. And it's true. It's like everyone is watching this. These people struggle and everyone is watching what's happening, kind of waiting to see. What we what we could see in the three sixty one was like was people surviving. It was um, people fighting. It was it was really. I know this is like so many levels. Like yes, the clothes were awesome and the clothes were really nice, but I feel like the show had a lot more depth to it when you actually take a step back and look at it from a distance, um, which just goes to show like the power that fashion and brands have in teaching people about things. Yeah, it was it was like a raw piece of art and that's why I wanted to sit down and discuss it with you because it was beautiful. And I'm so, so thankful for Balenciaga to invite me to this. I'm so, so grateful to each and every one of you guys that interacts and engages with my content because without you guys then I wouldn't be doing this. Got myself ready. I'm wearing the jacket that they uh, gifted to me. And I'm gonna go find some ramen because I'm really in the mood. It's very like cold and windy, even though it's sunny. But I feel like ramen would be great right now. It's such a nice day. Like it's cold, but it's not that cold.
that ramen place was really nice. It was called Nico Ramen. I just found it by Googling best ramen in Paris and it was like one of the closest ones to me. Um, and I figured I'm not that far from Gallery Lafayette, so I'm gonna go there and have a look around. Honestly, me trying to use the Parisian subway is laughable. Getting tickets took me like five minutes, what the hell? So I bought stuff at Manga Story, of course. Um, and then I remembered there is an exhibition on here that I really wanted to see, the Thierry Nuclear exhibition. And it's still on and they're open. So I'm going right now. I just booked a ticket online and yeah. So spontaneous, who am I? Who is she? Joel in Paris, what? Bonjour. It is cold this morning. I'm so glad I'm wearing this hoodie. And I'm actually wearing, I'm wearing my cargo trousers. But I'm also wearing the leggings from yesterday underneath because I knew it was gonna be cold. So I'm so glad that I did that. I am off to find some breakfast. Uh, I Googled like best places for breakfast in Paris. And I've seen a place that I'm very excited to go to. That place was so good for breakfast. It wasn't very French, but I just wanted like a big kind of brunch. I probably won't eat again till dinner now. Me pretending to be skinny on online. <laughs> uh, when you saw, I just consumed. So I have my dirty chai from Cafe Kitsune. Um, I've actually been there once before when I shot my, when I did my collaboration with Jaded, like in 2019. Uh, I think it was 2019, went and shot there. Um, we came to shoot the uh, kind of look with the thing in Paris uh, and we quickly wanted a coffee so me and Tom actually went there. So I've been there before, it's really really nice. Walking past the Louvre. I've never actually been in before either but maybe uh, me and Scott want to come back to Paris at some point together. Now I'm heading to the Balenciaga Risi. Um, I don't think I've ever been to a Risi before. 
but I, what I think it is, is where you get to like see the pieces up close and see the collection uh, in like a showroom environment. Uh, so that's what I believe is happening. Hey besties, I'm back at the hotel. Um, the Reese was so, so good. Uh, I'm not allowed to share any of the content that I took for the time being, uh, so it will all remain a mystery at the moment. Um, but I got to like see the pieces up close. Every single look was there from the show. Uh, all the accessories, uh, sunglasses, the bags, the shoes. Uh, great trip. Uh, I go back home tomorrow morning, so tonight I'm just gonna chill out and yeah, I feel like I've walked, I think I've done like 15,000 steps today, uh, which is good. From this bubble tea place, and it's like the bougiest thing I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it's like taro uh, bubble tea and then a black sesame little cake. 